In the early 2010s, Pixar was facing a challenge. Their characters were getting more complex, but their animation tools couldn't keep up. Subdivision surfaces, the technique behind smooth and detailed models, was too slow to preview in real time. So Pixar's software engineers came up with a solution. They called it Open Subdiv. It wasn't just a speed boost, it was a game changer. It brought industry-wide standardization to 3D modeling, especially character modeling workflows. From Maya, Max, Houdini to Blender, it reshaped how artists work with 3D models and characters, especially for animation projects, all thanks to Pixar. So what is this technique really, and how it changed the 3D industry? Before we continue, the Blender market is going through the spring sale, with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, courses, 3D models, and more. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Pixar's internal needs were pretty straightforward. Their animators were dealing with increasingly complex rigs, especially faces, with tons of muscle systems and tiny deformations. Also body parts where lots of mobility is needed, thus needing more efficient mesh distribution in the right places. Traditional subdivision systems just couldn't handle the feedback in real time. They needed something that could adaptively subdivide, work fast on GPUs, and still keep the visual quality at a high level for final renders. So Open Subdiv was designed around that exact challenge. In a nutshell, Pixar's Open Subdiv is a library that implements high-performance subdivision surface evaluation. It was developed by Pixar Animation Studios and made open source in 2013. The history of Open Subdiv, as we said, ties back to Pixar's need for a fast and scalable way to handle subdivision surfaces in their films. And as you know, subdivision surfaces are a key technique in 3D modeling to create smooth, high-resolution surfaces. As you might expect, Open Subdiv has been widely used in the productions of Pixar, such as the making of films like Finding Dory, Inside Out, and Toy Story 4. In these movies, the detailed and smooth character animations benefited greatly from Open Subdiv's real time performance and adaptive refinement of the mesh. It allowed the artists to work with complex models while maintaining high quality visuals so they can see what they are doing and how it reacts to their changes, but most importantly, it allowed them to use geometry efficiently and animate their characters without facing weird problems that come from the lack of the right mesh distribution in the areas that need the most flexibility and mobility. Open Subdiv has also been adopted in other major studios and used in films like the Peanuts movie and The Good Dinosaur where the technology helped create smooth and detailed looking characters and environments. In the world of game development, it is also integrated into tools like Autodesk Maya and Max, which are widely used for creating high quality game assets. Games with high quality detailed characters, in addition to assets and environments, can leverage Open Subdiv to streamline the modeling and animation process. Also, they can make sure that 3D models can look great in previews and final renders, I mean in the game engines. Now, you might say this is all fine and dandy, but how are you as a 3D artist gonna benefit from it? The truth is, Open Subdiv has become a standard in the industry, adopted by many major 3D software like Maya, Max, Houdini, and even Blender. Its open source nature means it can be integrated and improved by the community and even big companies too which I think is a nice move from Pixar, because honestly, everyone benefited from it immediately. Pixar obviously used it internally, right away, but the first major external adopters were Autodesk and the Foundry. Maya was actually one of the first 3D software to adopt Open Subdiv, and it did so with Pixar's direct involvement. Autodesk collaborated closely with Pixar during the development of Open Subdiv, because Maya was already a key tool in Pixar's animation pipeline. Open Subdiv was introduced in Maya 2015, extension 1, 
just a year or so after the library was open sourced in 2013. It wasn't just a tacked-on feature, it was deeply integrated into Viewport 2.0, giving Maya artists real-time playback and manipulation of subdivision surfaces right inside the software. This was actually a big deal, especially for character riggers and animators, who needed smooth geometry without baking or waiting for a render. Pixar used Maya extensively, so Autodesk early adoption made sense. They even added support for open subdivs creasing rules and boundary interpolation, ensuring that what you saw in Maya match what you will get in Pixar's in-house render engines, or the external ones even, that followed the standard. Max integrated open subdiv quite early too, but not as early as Maya. Autodesk added an official open subdiv modifier in Max 2016, just a couple of years after the open source release. They marketed it as a replacement, or at least an alternative to Turbo Smooth, especially useful for game artists and modelers working with subdivision preview in real time. The integration was relatively direct. Users could add it as a modifier on top of a mesh and take advantage of features like GPU acceleration in addition to crease handling and compatibility with other open subdiv aware tools. However, adoption wasn't always smooth. GPU acceleration was hardware dependent and sometimes buggy on certain cards and drivers, so some users stuck with TurboSmooth for reliability. Blender's adoption of open subdiv was slower and more complex than Maya and Max, mainly because of technical reconstruction and resource limitations at the time. The Blender Foundation began integrating open subdiv around version 2.74, released in 2015, shortly after the tech was open sourced by Pixar. However, full integration, especially with GPU acceleration, took longer than expected. But why? Simply because Blender's internal architecture at the time wasn't ready to handle open subdivs real-time GPU pipeline. Specifically, Blender was undergoing a major overhaul with its dependency graph and the rewriting of EV and the Workbench engine. So open subdiv had to wait for its turn. By Blender 2.76, Open subdiv was actually available, but only on the CPU. And without adaptive subdivision or increasing support, GPU acceleration, which was one of subdiv's biggest strengths, remained disabled for years because Blender's viewport system couldn't communicate efficiently with it. It wasn't until Blender 2.9, released in 2020, that open subdiv GPU acceleration was properly enabled in the viewport. And even then, it had some limitations like missing features when using modifiers in the edit mode. Full support for creases, UV boundary interpolation, and even adaptive subdivision continued to be developed slowly afterward. Houdini, on the other hand, took a more careful and gradual approach. In fact, it already had its own sophisticated subdivision system, so side effects didn't rush to replace it, but they eventually incorporated open subdiv as an option within their subdivide SOP giving users the ability to choose between different subdivision schemes, including Catmull Clark via Open Subdiv, and by Houdini 15, released in 2015, it was present as a backend. Houdini's viewport wasn't always focused on real-time animation feedback, the same way like Maya, Max, and so on. So Open Subdiv's speed boost wasn't as game-changing for Houdini users, who were most often doing procedural modeling or offline rendering but it was embraced for interchangeability. Sharing assets between studios, or tools like Maya and Blender, became easier when everyone followed the open subdiv standard. But what is open subdiv really, under the hood? Compared to older subdivision schemes, like Loop or Butterfly, open subdiv isn't about inventing a new math model. It actually sticks with Catmull Clark, which is industry standard. And by the way, Catmull Clark subdivision is the core algorithm used to smooth and refine 3D meshes. It is the default and most widely supported subdivision scheme, not just in Open Subdiv, but across the entire industry. So Open Subdiv uses Catmull Clark, but it supercharges the process using adaptive algorithms and parallel processing, which older systems weren't designed to do. If we try to be more technical, the API Pixar created is modular 
so it separates the topology processing from the geometry evaluation, so developers can plug it into any software. One modular builds the subdivided topology, and the other evaluates the vertex positions. The separation makes it very flexible and easy to optimize. As for the GPU acceleration workflows, OpenSubdiv was built with modern graphic pipelines in mind. Unlike older methods that were mostly CPU bound, OpenSubdiv lets the GPU handle a big part of the subdivision process. This means artists can rotate, pose, and animate high rise models, and they can do it right in the viewport without needing to bake anything or switch the proxy geometry. That's why OpenSubdiv was and still a big deal for real-time feedback and iteration in the viewport. And professionals and big studios really appreciate this technology, even though to the average person this doesn't seem like a big deal, because these guys are always pushing the boundaries, and they need any help they can get. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.